Redemption song, or as Manjoli song, singing live in our Democracy Now! studio. He came up from the United, from Haiti to the United States after the earthquake. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we return to my interview with Sean Penn, we sat with him in his tent as he ran a Haitian refugee camp of over 55,000 people in Petionville, in Port-au-Prince. I've heard over and over, I've heard from aid workers whose trips here were canceled. Um, there just wasn't the money. That even the promised money then dries up when the attention is elsewhere, say BP, the Gulf of Mexico, or just the media. Well, then the, 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 if, the money is, if the money is dried up because of BP, then BP should pay for it. BP should come here with some of their money and, 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 and put some in. Because one of the things that people have to understand, well, you know, this is a, a, you know, because I know that there's been so much discussion on your show from the beginning, you in particular, who I think are a heroic person in, in the American media and therefore in the world media about, you know, all of the things that led up to war that were the wars that we are still in now. And we had all of this argument between parties and the left and the right about this idea of supporting the troops, the idea of what being a patriot is. So much so that we forgot about the Constitution and, and made it up ourselves. So let's just go back to supporting the troops. I was here, and I saw the 82nd Airport. This was the most significantly noble mission that the United States military has participated in since World War II, and they did it with so much courage and grace. There was no soldier that didn't know clearly if somebody desperate cursed them, that that person had just lost 20 people in their family. And unlike the United Nations troops, largely, who still to this day, sadly, look like stormtroopers, they slung a rifle over their shoulder because that's what they do in the U.S. military. They didn't wear their helmets. They were there. They were open and talked to the people. And they personally cared. And they had a very clear, decisive mandate. And they did it. And one of the soldiers from right here at this camp is never going to walk or talk again because of cerebral malaria, because they didn't have time for some of the inoculations that those of us who had a few days to respond did. And they came in. So they had hard deployments in those wars that we as a country support. Our president supports now. And whether you like that war or you don't like it, that's their job. They, they went there. So How they were. So they, it, so, so they were. I think Afghanistan is a is 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 a ludicrous exercise. But in I but and and one of the reasons is because there is a for America productive exercise right here. Imagine Haiti this way. First of all, if if all that their their investment was and all our investment because we got to pay the Department of Defense back for what they did here. Don't think that because we funded the Department of Defense that we don't have to pay them back again because that's the way it works. So now you have a war here. You got a surge coming with storms, but no no face to hate, no country to, to roll at, no natural resources, and the faces here are black. And that's why there's uh, there's there's other things. There's natural resources that are in balance over there. There's all of that stuff, and that's not some lefty conspiracy theory. That's just bottom line fact. And both sides that play in the money know it. And everybody else, and they and, and everybody gets manipulated. And it's really simple. So then here, what's really simple is that if an American buys an energy-saving light bulb and turns it on, they're frustrated at how long it takes to heat up. These people never had, most of them never had electricity. You give them an energy-saving light bulb, they're going to invite their friends and neighbors over with glee to watch it go. And in a country like that, you bring that kind of manufacturing here and you build that technology here, in 10 years you'll have a showplace that will turn the American companies and green technologies into the Silicon Valley of the, the 80s and 90s. And, and you'll have an economic boom like we've never seen in the United States, begin to repair our environment, save this country that's at our doorstep, and for the first time make an investment that's complete and successful where people are black, which we still haven't done in New Orleans. And we can be really proud. And if we don't do it, 
then you might as well say, say you're spitting on the American military because you're going to let everything that they did here, the drainage mitigations, those that the National Guard are still doing in Gona Eve, which was, is, is likely to get hit by a hurricane this year and kill enormous amount of people who, are, who were already in danger and now they're in spontaneous camps in, directly in, in riverbeds. So there's a chance for America to not only be very proud, but to be very rich and to have a real friend in a country with, with a character that's been strengthened by the absence of comfort for so long. What's going to make that happen? The U.S. is committed in Afghanistan. The U.S. is sending more troops there. Well, there are, there are people in our system. There's Senator Landro. There are people like Paul Vallis who are here. There's the Haitian government. And I think that if there's enough public support in the United States, which is going to take some real public awareness, Haiti is, is, is at the beginning of its own reconstruction with the help, hopefully, from this, this donor money. But those of us in, in doing the work that we're doing are going to be the ones, if we're lucky and we get the funds, to preserve the population that will inhabit that reconstructed Haiti. Because this, this, this place could, I mean, my God, if, they, if there were, God forbid, uh, which, which has not been here in 25 years, but if cholera came in on a boat, you'd lose 3,000 a day, it would be over. If, if, if social unrest is allowed to be the, the, what, what, what occurs, all these aid organizations are going to shut down. How long in this six months have you spent here in Haiti? I've spent probably five months of it here and, and kind of, uh, uh, you know, broken up a month out of country over the time. How is this, how has this changed your life?